This is a finite element problem and we are working with a spring assembly that's shown right here. We have two elements that are represented with springs. They want us to find the displacement at node 2. They want us to find the elemental forces for both elements and they want us to find this force F3 for an initial displacement that would be one inch. Since we are working with spring representations, we're going to be relying on this formula, which is force on a spring, F equals kx. And uh, we can't use it right away because we need it in matrix form. So let's go ahead and find our k first. Here's a quick deduction of it. We're going to be finding k, the local stiffness matrix. And this is pretty much the important part that you need to remember, where k equals this little matrix. This will help us find uh, the local stiffness matrix for both elements. k is given. k1 and 2 equals 1200 pound inches. So to convert it into matrix form, we're going to do it for element 1 and element 2. As you can see, k1 and k2 will be equal to each other. But behind the scenes, there is a very important distinction that we need to make. Element 1 is bordered by points 1 and 2. Element 2 is bordered by points 2 and 3. We need to represent these over here. And in order to don't forget, I like to write it right here above and next to it. Right like this. U1, U2, U1, U2 for element 2. U2, U3, U2, and U3. This will be very important at the next step right here, where we're going to be finding the global stiffness matrix. I already filled in some of it, just so we can have some structure. But up here, I like to put the same information that I did over here, just so we can fill it in much easier. Now let's transfer this information from these two ma uh, local matrices into the global one. U1, U2, and U3 are our points, which need to be represented in the global stiffness matrix as well. So I put them up here, U1, U2, U3, U1, U2, U3. How are we going to transfer these two information into this one? Let's take a look. Let's start with element 1. This one uh, value that we have here is in location u1 u1 so let's come to this matrix and find location u1 u1 right here and we'll put it right here follow the next one u2 u1 has a value of negative one find the same location u2 u1 put it right here this negative one came from right there this value u1, u2, u1, u2, negative 1. Now this location we need to pay attention to. u2, 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 we have a value of 1. Now this matrix is, matrix is transferred, right? Now let's do the next one. And what you notice here, that we have another value that will go in this location of u2 and u2 which is another one. Therefore, we need to add it to this one. This will be 1 plus 1. And fill in the rest with the same setup that we had up there. And we'll, you'll have all your values. Now, they, as you notice, there's two places. Nothing went, no, no information is available for those. So therefore, for these locations, we'll fill in nice fat zeros. Now that we have our global stiffness matrix calculated, we can get back to our main formula, F equals Kx, the force on a spring, but we're going to write it up in matrix form, where the global forces equal global stiffness matrix times the displacements. Let's expand this. Global force at point 1, 2, and 3 in the x direction this is a one directional problem all we're doing is just working in the x direction equals the stiffness matrix that we calculated right here 
and our displacements u2 u1 u2 u3 and as you can kind of do a check on yourself see the numbers match force on one displacement on one force on two displacement on two three three now at this point before we go over here it's very beneficial to take a look at which lines can you eliminate let's take a look u1 u2 u3 they are all some kind of displacement but point one is fixed therefore right away we can eliminate u1 as being zero so i'm gonna go ahead and mark it as a big fat zero here and this is very helpful u1 is zero so therefore this whole first line we can go ahead and pretend like it doesn't even exist let me like like this i'm trying to cover it so i don't even see it now we have two lines left we can go ahead do this matrix multiplication right here write it out on this side and let's see what we have u2 is what we are interested in right that's one of the unknowns u3 is our delta that's been given up there and it's equal to one inch so that's a known value if uh, global force at point two we have no global force acting at point two there's nothing happening at f3 that's exactly what we want to find fill it out this is a system of equations two unknowns two equations from this first equation you find u2 0.5 inch from this equation plugging this in here we'll find f3 in the x direction as 600 pounds now we have two of the things that they were asking us. Now we need to go to the local uh, forces on each element. Let's start with element one. We're gonna write up our equation, the F equals KX, but in matrix form, and this time not globally, but locally and for element one. Let's expand this. Local forces, Element 1 is bordered by point 1 and point 2. Therefore, local force F1 in the x direction, F2 in the x direction, both belonging to point 1, equals local stiffness matrix, our K1, which is right here, this value, times our displacements for the two points that are bordering this element 1 and 2. Fill in the values that we know, and which are u1, displacement is 0, u2, 0.5, we found it right here. Simply multiply out this matrix, and we will find our values for f1x in uh, belonging to element 1, negative 600 pounds, f2x belonging to element 1, 600 pounds. Also, if you want to do a little check on your work, you can draw a free body diagram for this one element and you can see that your f1x has a magnitude and direction in this way 600 pounds f2x on this side is positive going this way 600 pounds therefore it's in equilibrium we found the forces on element one all there's left is to find the forces on element 2, the exact same process that we did for element 1, F equals K times displacement, but this time for element 2, expand this, fill it out, fill in the unknown, I mean the known, and find the unknown, and you'll find the values for element 2 as well.